Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday. Got my toucan. It's minus 20 and snowing outside. And tonight we are going to take a look at the uh, React testing library. This is um, something that sort of works alongside of Jest to help you test your React code. It's an alternative to the uh, enzyme testing library. But uh, this one's very simple to use and I haven't used it yet other than just playing around with it for a few minutes. So I thought we would sort of look into some basics together. And my goal in this uh, mini series is basically to work through some of these examples here, specifically the, uh, the context one, the Redux one, the, the different router ones, and a fetch one that they have sort of included on the main page wherever they show that. Ah, we'll get to it. But in this video, the first one, we're just gonna show the very basics of how to get up and running with it. So we'll open up our editor and we got this mini component here, header. Takes in some text, puts it inside of a header with an H2 and um, outputs that text here. So super basic component and we're gonna write some tests for it. So the first thing you would wanna do is install this library. So yarn add react testing library. And there's this other package that goes along really nicely with it called just Dom. It gives you some nice um, sort of expect uh, it to have this text content or expect this H2 tag to have a class or a certain attribute or whatnot. So we're going to add that along with it to, to help us uh, test more easily. So we'll add that with it just Dom in. Okay. So while that's installing down here in our terminal, we will create a test file. So since we're testing the header, we'll do header.test.js and we'll just import a few things. We're gonna import React um, because we need to sort of use the component that we're gonna be testing. So we need React for that. And then from uh, the React testing library, we can import a couple things. The first one will be a function called render and a second one called cleanup. So that's from React testing library. Okay, good so far. Um, next, we're going to import those uh, special Jest DOM, um, that Jest DOM package to help us uh, test our code a little bit easier. So we'll add that in. And of course, we need to import the component that we're testing. So import header from dot slash header. Okay, so we're gonna be using Jest, which comes with create React app. So at this point, it's just straight up Jest. So we can say it renders, that's like our most basic test, and we pass an arrow function here. So the first thing we wanna do is basically render this component that we're trying to test. So to do that, we are going to say const, and then we're gonna extract some variables from the response here. We'll get to that in a second. So we will render the header component and you need to pass some text to that. So we'll just say hello, something. Okay, so self-closing tag. Okay, so render, which is a, a function from the React testing library, returns us back a number of sort of other little functions that we can call specific to the component that we're testing. So what we'll get back in this test specifically is something called ag as fragment. So what is fragment? It's basically just the chunk of HTML that this component rendered. And why would we want that? We can do what's called a snapshot test. And uh, I'll write it and then explain what we would use that for. So we will say expect um, as fragment to match snapshot like that. Okay, so let's run this test. So we can just type yarn test down here and it will run and perfect. So it finished okay and it says one snapshot written. So a snapshot, which it creates a folder here, underscore, underscore snapshots down here. It's literally just what I said. It is the HTML that was rendered. So why would you want this? Uh, you can basically use this to make sure anytime you do some refactoring, it produces the same HTML that you're expecting it to. So imagine we go back to header and we change this to an H1. When this test reruns, it's gonna fail because 
it was wanting an H2, but we've updated to H1. And we can sort of decide here, did we really want an H1 or did we want, um, in, which, in which case we can press U, which will update the snapshot with the new output, or we can go and fix our code uh, to make sure that that test is passing. So that is the most basic sort of, did it render correctly? And we will use a snapshot to test that. Okay, so what's this cleanup here? Um, I've seen it all the examples. I assume that React Testing Library um, creates some, some sort of garbage and stuff like that as it's running its test. And we can call this cleanup function to get rid of all of that. Um, unmounts, what's it say? Unmounts React trees that were mounted with render. So I guess it's a good thing to do. And we will use a function that calls from Jest called, or yeah, that just calls sort of automatically and provides globally in these tests called after each. And we can basically just say, after each test, go call this cleanup function to clean things up. So let's do one sort of more basic test where we are going to not just use a snapshot, but use some different functions returned from the React testing library render function to basically pinpoint parts of the uh, code that was produced in this component to make sure that it's doing what we want it to. So we'll say it um, inserts text in H1. Okay, so maybe this isn't needed because we have our snapshot up here, which is sort of doing the same thing, but this will set us up for sort of more advanced videos where we do need to sort of select individual elements and, and perform some functions on them. Okay, so we're going to do the same sort of thing const equals and we'll render uh, the header with some text that says hello. Okay, so what we can get back here are two things. Um, if we just start typing, it will tell us. So we can say get by test ID and get by text. Those are the two we are going to be using here. So both of these functions basically allow us to select individual elements returned from this uh, what the component rendered. So we can sort of find this H1 or um, find the header and whatnot, and it gives us different ways to find elements. These are two ways, but there's other ways like get by label, get by area, role. And uh, React Testing Library right from the bat comes um, in a way that sort of it only gives you the easiest, like most basic ways to, to select elements. Um, one of the reasons it was created because Enzyme gives you like, A, it gives you three different ways to render components. So it's a lot more complicated. Um, this gives us accessible ways to find uh, elements as well, like using area and label and whatnot and text. So that's nice to work with. Okay, so let's do this first one here, get by test ID. So often sort of in, in Enzyme, you'd, you'd add like a special class or something to your uh, tag so you could select it. The problem with that is um, if you ever wanted to change your sort of CSS class, you'd break all your tests because the class wasn't really meant for testing. It was meant for, for styling something. So with uh, React Testing Library, it gives us something with the, uh, the data attribute called data test ID. So we can just put, uh, we'll just call this the H1 tag here. And then in our tests, we can use this data property to, um, to find this tag. So we'll come back here and we'll say, we're going to expect, and we'll use get by test ID along with our text that we put there, H1 tag. So that finds us the H1 element and then we can expect it something. So this is where the just dom extend expect comes in. So we can expect it to have text content. So because we are rendering this in there, we can expect that it has hello. And I'll just do it wrong at the beginning so we can see the failing test. Okay, so we actually have two failing tests. One because our snapshot is now out of date. And do we have two? Uh, 
Maybe not. Okay. Let's update that one first so we can see. Oh, I guess because it does have that. So if I do something random, I mentioned I'm learning this stuff too. Cool. So I guess it does find subsets of stuff. It doesn't look for like the entire word. But in this case, we can look and expect this to have text content hello. So another way you can find an element is by the text. So we can say expect, get by text. So we'll, this time we'll find it by hello. And we can use another um, expects function from uh, this just dom extend expect. We could say expect it to have um, maybe a class that we're looking for. Uh, there's a ton of different selectors that, that this provides. I wonder if it has a list here. To contain HTML, to have attribute, to have class, to have focus. So just a ton of different ways to test your HTML. So we will expect it to have a class called fancy h1. So that should fail because I don't I haven't added that yet. Um, yep, so it didn't find that. Expected element to have class and it received nothing. So we'll go back and we'll add a class to this. Shoot. Class name, fancy h1. So our test reruns. And this test is passing now, but we broke our snapshot again because now it's it's uh, it's looking for this. So obviously we want that fancy h1 class so we can hit u and update the snapshot and that will make all of our tests passing. Cool, so just to review this tiniest component ever that just returns some text inside of an h1, but we added a data test ID to this and uh, also a class name just that we were gonna test to make sure it's there. So the two sort of types of tests we performed were that it um, matches the snapshot. So we, we render our component. This comes from the React testing library um, package. It returned us back as fragment, which we can use to generate a snapshot. And we also used a couple other little functions that get returned from render that help us find different elements inside the tree that's uh, been rendered out. So we can find elements by test ID is one way. Um, so we were looking for H1 tag. We can also find them by text. And then once we find these elements, we want to sort of test that something's true about them, right? So we used to have text content and to have class, which both come from the just DOM um, package that has this extend expect to add a whole bunch of functions onto the Jest texting uh, testing framework. So that's the intro to React Testing Library. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.